When your YouTube channel grow, more brands contact you to hopefully get promoted on the channel. And some even pay. So there are good reasons to be skeptical when watching reviews and recommendations on YouTube. Since YouTube isn't my main job, I can focus on the products that I believe can help me teach and inspire through the videos. And as always, I'm focusing on showing you test videos so you can judge the products yourself. With that in mind, let's go to what this video is about, the Atomus Shogun Inferno. Thanks to Will, one of our subscribers, Atomus sent us this to test it out. And since they sent it to me, I need to show you this text, because that's the Norwegian law. So, Atomus Shogun Inferno is both a monitor and a video recorder. It is capable of recording the video you output from a camera and actually make it look even better than what the camera can record internally. How is that possible? Well, most cameras need to compress the video a lot to be able to record on small SD cards and play it back on the camera. The Atomus recorder uses SSD drives, which are faster and actually cheaper. This lets the recorder capture video with less compressed codecs, like Apple ProRes. This codec also makes the editing smoother, as it is more optimized for editing softwares. Choosing the right codec, ProRes HQ. Even though my Panasonic GH4 only records 8-bit colors, it can output 10-bit colors to the external recorder and thereby give you more color information and better video quality. GH5 and GH5S can also output 10-bit video. So the more bits, the more levels of shades of each color channel you can have in an image. Let's use black and white as an example. In an 8-bit image, you have 256 different shades of white to black. And with 10-bit, you have 1024 shades between white and black. In this video, we'll do a quick test and see if the video quality gets any better. Can a used Panasonic GH4 for 500 bucks become a beast with a Shogun recorder? Let's see. Okay, let's start off with some tests with the GH4. Okay, now we're recording 4K inside the GH4. It's 8-bit still. Even though this is 8-bit, it is hard to tell by just looking at the image. This is 4K, 10-bit inside the Shogun Inferno. Except the Apple ProRes video being a bit more magenta, it's not possible to see the difference with this grading. So, let's push the colors a lot. Even though the saturation is very high now, and we zoom in, there's actually not much difference. Hmm. Let's pick a certain color and make everything else white. Ah, now we are starting to see the difference. The 8-bit video is a bit more blocky. And this can be an issue when working with keying and green screen. Okay, maybe this kitchen wasn't the best place to test it out. Let's do the typical 10-bit versus 8-bit test. Filming the sky and then push the colors a lot. Now I'm using the EVA 1 camera. So this is 10-bit and I'm pushing the colors so much that they are starting to see the banding in the sky. And this is the same shot in 8-bit. Let's apply the exact same grading. Now you can clearly see the difference. Ok, let's try to key out parts of this green thing. Again, you can see that the 10-bit has a smoother color transition. But when we turn off the effect, it is not noticeable. Now we got full HD, 200 megabits per second, all eye codec, so that's great. Uh, it's 50 FPS. If you, if you have a GH4, you can only shoot 8-bit internally, so there's no need to buy the VLOG activation code. If you only got 8-bit, uh, you can use the scene like D picture profile, which you get with the GH4. Uh, I talked with a guy from Panasonic and he agreed. So uh, VLOG is not necessary if you're shooting internally on a GH4. Okay, now we are recording in the Shogun Inferno, and now it's 10-bit Apple ProRes 422HQ. That's a really good codec. And uh, it's still full HD, 50 FPS. And uh, yeah, does it look better? I hope so. Maybe we can do more with colors. And uh, no, you won't get any more dynamic range, but uh, better color information. So it's better for color grading. Yeah, I got a cat sweater as you can see. I'm actually selling this sweater. Check out the link in the description. All the money we receive from that store will go to the cats. They have to clean their teeth. They have to buy both the, the wet food and the dry food. You have to buy... Okay, we understand. <laughs> now let's do some tests outside 
and with other cameras as well. You see the cats were there, right? We are now in Oslo, the capital of Norway, and also the city with all the Teslas and Panasonic cameras. By looking at this map of Oslo, we can see in which areas the different camera brands are most common. Sony is the most popular, and as assumed, red is the most popular in the rich areas. But we are looking for Panasonic GH4, GH5 and GH5S users to join the test. Therefore, we are heading to Grünelöka, the hipster part of Oslo. Hallå. Hallå. Hej. Hej. Är det G4? G4. G4. Och G5S? Ja. Fett. Jag lika med Men är har du svamp på test eller? Ja. Check. Play this is right here. Wow, is that GH5? Yeah, yeah, it's GH5. Yeah. Also, hallå. Nej, we got two GH5s here. Eh, Panasonic. Oh, there's one too. <laughs> yeah, the Eva. Oh, cool. We got uh, okay. So we got the GH4, GH5s, GH5 times two, and the Eva camera. Could we do a join the test and see which one is the best? Yeah, yeah let's do it. <laughs> I hope for the GH4. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so we went into the shadows to choose some skin tones. With uh, this strange thing floating next to us. Yep, that's a typical Norwegian art. Very nice. And it's funny because this guy, Cuckoo, has a quite popular YouTube channel. So I asked him to send me a 5 seconds introduction to his channel, and here it is. Hello, this is Cuckoo. Hello, this is Cuckoo. <laughs> to make the comparison between the different cameras fair, we will use the same lens, the Sigma 18-35mm, since this lens is not a Micro Four Thirds lens, we are using a speed booster to be able to attach them to the GH4, GH5 and GH5S. So let's begin with 25fps 4K. This is the quality of each camera with a Shogun and a Rec. 709 LUT. Hello, this is Cuckoo and this is Organ Pop number 3. Now let's see how each camera did in 4K 25 FPS. Let's start with the GH4. The Shogun Inferno clips are always to the left, so you don't get confused. Again, it was impossible to see the difference when just applying the LUT. It was the same with the GH5, GH5S, and EVA 1. But when selecting a certain color, the blocking was back. What surprised me was that even though GH5 and GH5S shoot 10-bit, the internal footage was more blocky than the 10-bit Shogun footage. This is probably because of the different codecs. And here is the GH4 8-bit versus GH5 10-bit internally. The EVA 1 did it better in this test. The internal footage didn't look as compressed when keying. Okay, now over to slow motion. Here we start to see a difference. Since this is shot in 50 FPS, the camera needs to compress each frame more than with 25 FPS to be able to capture the amount of data. The Shogun doesn't compress it as much as the camera, and therefore it looks better.
Here is an example of extreme compression. This is shot in 96 FPS internally in the GH4. Look how compressed it is compared to 50 FPS. Unfortunately, the Shogun doesn't record more than 60 FPS from the GH4, GH5 and GH5S. However, with the EVA 1, it can record up to 240 FPS through the SDI. I'll come back with some video shot in 240 FPS ProRes RAW with the EVA 1 a bit later in the video. That was a quick test. Thank you so much, guys. Panasonic team. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to check out their YouTube channel. Text here, somewhere. And uh, stay Panasonic. <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, So all the shots you have seen from the Shogun was captured with Apple ProRes HQ codec. But you are also able to record in other codecs like the new Apple ProRes RAW. So far of the cameras we have been using, the EVA one is the only one that supports the RAW output. I'll come back to that. The Shogun Inferno is more than just an external recorder. It has a really bright monitor with many features like waveforms, vector scopes and other monitoring tools. You can also add markers to your shots and import that into your editing software. You can add LUTs to see how the shots would look graded and you can even see your shot in HDR. And this is very handy, I'll come back to that. You can record and adjust sound directly into the Shogun with the XLR adapter you get with the Shogun. And playback is very easy. To transfer your footage from your Shogun and to your PC or Mac, you can use a SSD reader like this one. Now, let me explain why the HDR tool is awesome. Most cameras nowadays shoot over 10 stops of dynamic range, so you can capture details in the shadows and the highlights at the same time. And when using a log picture profile like this, you can see the details in those areas. But as the log makes the image look grey and washed out, Adding a LUT is preferred to get a nice contrasty and colorful image that most people prefer. However, when you add a LUT, like the REC 709, the monitor displays less stops of dynamic range, which means that you don't see what your camera actually captures. This is an example shot with EVA 1, which is supposed to have 14 stops of dynamic range. If you had a monitor which just added a LUT, you would need to try to compensate the exposure in the camera to get the best looking image. However, with the HDR tool on the Atomos recorder, you can see what your camera is actually capturing in the highlights. This means you can expose the shadows brighter and reduce less noise, because you know that the details in the highlights are captured. Dragging up brightness in post will create noise, but not dragging down the brightness. And since the details in the highlights are there, you can do things like masking out the window and drag down just that area. Another exciting thing is the option to record Apple ProRes RAW. I haven't tested it myself yet, but it looks like something that is going to improve the video quality a lot. Just take a look at the 240 FPS video that Nicholas Moldenhauer shot with the EVA 1 and Apple ProRes RAW. I will probably make something with Apple ProRes RAW in the future, so stay tuned on our social media and subscribe if you haven't done that. Atomos got several external recorders, and Shogun Inferno is one of the most expensive ones, costing $1,300 without the SSD drives. The new $700 Ninja 5 can record up to 4K 60fps as well, but it only has a HDMI input, so it's not possible to record RAW from cameras like the EVA 1 as it only works through SDI. Ok, as a conclusion, if you are more of a run and gun type of filmmaker who need practical gear, or if you are someone who doesn't do a lot of grading, 
an external recorder isn't necessary in my eyes. But if you can afford it, it will definitely give you more flexibility in posts. Our new production company views just shot the commercial, with the EVA 1 and Shogun Inferno shooting 4K 60fps 10 bits. We had to shoot a lot in one day, so we didn't always have time to fine adjust the light. Therefore it was a big plus that the footage was shot in 10-bit Apple ProRes, so we had more possibilities to adjust the colors in post. Also it was great to use the HDR tool, and the bright screen made it easy to focus and also film outside during sunlight. So I hope you liked this video, thanks for all the support, especially from our patrons. If you want to become a patron, press the link in the description. You will then get access to exclusive stuff, like the upcoming vlog from the Norwegian YouTube Awards Gullsnitten, where I hoped I met some fans, but they didn't show up, so yeah, I was a bit lonely, but that's okay. This is the feeling of having no Norwegian fans. Isn't it great? I think it's great. So stay tuned for more videos and I see you again soon. Hadera!